Hello again from the Hearts at War project. Um, it's just a short video again, um, sort of uh, next in line of the uh, series that we're creating, looking at um, items of interest that were obviously uh, very important during the Great War. Um, and this one is uh, perhaps more important than than any other item in terms of its impact and uh, the damage that was that was caused by. Uh, items such as this um, and this is a British 18 pounder First World War shrapnel shell um, with fuse in fact this is a cutaway version which is a really nice rare thing to find but it allows us to see the inner workings of the shell and sort of talk a little bit about how it came about what its function was and and the kind of damage that it caused um, but um, first things first, I suppose it, it's quite a little known fact really that the, the vast majority, and I do mean vast, by, by something in the order of 80% upwards of casualties caused during the Great War were caused by, uh, by shell fire. And uh, probably the majority of those were caused by shrapnel fire as well, which um, would, uh, well, shrapnel shell fire I should say. So we have here the um, the business end of, a, of an 18 pounder shell, of course minus its uh, its brass case which you would see uh, off the uh, left end here um, you can just see what's known as the drive band here which would be um, where the shell plugged into the um, into the case with its cordite and therefore was expelled by the um, by the artillery piece but the general idea with a shrapnel shell is of course that it's it's not designed to um, detonate upon impact with the ground Rather, it's um, actually got a, a very elaborate and uh, precise timing system, which is uh, designed so that the shell will actually uh, detonate slightly in front of and slightly above the enemy position. Um, we could probably go into that in a little bit of detail just here, but just a, a quick overview. Obviously, we've got a um, we've got a milled steel case, um, which inside you can see here is filled with over 300 um, of these. Um, things here which are uh, lead ball bearings and the idea being that um, at the uh, preset time using the uh, the fuse which we'll, we'll mention in a moment the um, uh, the charge would explode the main charge inside the shell would explode which would force a sort of plunger like disc attached to this um, attached to this rod here the disc is actually in the back somewhere like there um, to fire forwards, thus expelling all of these um, all of these uh, shrapnel balls, kind of spitting them out in a in a fan in a kind of shotgun effect um, to cause as much uh, havoc and uh, and, and uh, death, I suppose, amongst the uh, amongst the enemy as possible. So a really interesting item. Um, it's actually worked using uh, what's known as a powder train. So the idea is that um, these rotatable if we look at the side of the fuse here, we can see some, hopefully, see some markings. Um, yeah, there we are. Some timer markings on, on one of the two timing rings of the fuse. The idea being that um, the position they're set means that the, the fine milled powder that's uh, within there, which of course uh, gunpowder burns at a uh, very finite rate, um, can actually dictate the amount of time between about six and twenty-one seconds that it takes for the uh, for the the shell to detonate. So, for example, if you're three thousand yards away from the enemy position, you would um, set the timing ring so that the uh, the gunpowder would reach the main the main charge within this cylinder, this hollow tube, which would then thread down to another charge in this kind of cup at the bottom of the shell which would um, then set the main charge, set off the main charge, which would uh, basically fire the shell along with all the shrapnel balls out of the front end and uh, do, do a serious amount of damage. Now, of course, they, they were an air burst, so the idea was, was to detonate in the air, as I say, because of the forward momentum a few hundred meters above and uh, in front of the enemy position with the idea that they would scatter downwards and, uh, and they did cause a huge amount of casualties. Um, this is a British version and uh, was uh, employed in, in tremendous numbers in, in many different roles. In fact, they were originally used, uh, perhaps one of their most famous uses was to try and uh, chop up barbed wire on the, uh, on the Somme during the, um, 
during the preceding week to the, the 1st of July 1916 bombardment, which they didn't do very well at all. And of course, we all know the results of the, the, the infamous first day of the Somme campaign. But this, as I say, is a is a really key part of warfare. It caused substantially more casualties than, than bullets and uh, was pretty much an ever-present danger. You didn't have to be in the trenches to be hit by one of these. Um, many men were hit in support or in reserve positions, whereas a, a bullet being a direct fire, um, direct fire danger, you basically you had to be able to see the enemy and therefore he had to be in an exposed position and therefore you, in trench warfare you, you tended to find there was a, a lot more um, minimal casualties caused by bullets, um, something in the order of 8% of all casualties compared to 80 odd percent with something like this. But a really, um, a really uh, impressive and, and very, uh, very advanced item for its time. And uh, this was one of one of various types. Of course, there was the high explosive, uh, high explosive shell, which later on, um, between the wars, led to a development in a, an anti-tank round and various other things. But this is a, a lovely example of a cutaway British 18-pounder QF quick fire um, shrapnel shell. So there we are. Um, we'll uh, do another one. Thanks.